been pretty warm. Welcome everybody. I hate to uh, I hate to use that add everyone function, but it's the only way I can reach you. And I get it if you're not interested, just click the uh, you know the whatever. But in a way, I kind of sort of apologize for using the add everyone feature. But it, like I said, it's the only way to notify people in the group that I'm going live. And so we're going to cover some current events going on and whatnot. And uh, if you're interested, follow along. Let's talk. I do reply to comments in real time. Anytime you guys comment on here, I try to address it and uh, talk. And like I said, once again, you know, I do apologize for the add everyone tag, but that's the only way I can reach you. I have groups with thousands and thousands of people and Facebook does not notify them when I post anything or when I go live or anything. It's not the way it used to be. And it's pretty much censored. And so that's my only way to get through to you. Now, I have one group with 6,700 people in it. And these live streams used to get five to 10,000 views. And a time or two, they've gotten into the 20,000s of views. And they just don't anymore. I don't know if people just don't care or if it's just, you know, the reach is being neutered. I get it. You know, politics can burn you out. And that's why I kind of veer a little bit away from politics. I try to cover more of news orient, news oriented thing, preparedness, uh, things going on and not just get on here and harp about the politics. So I try to cover, you know, a deep facet of things that I find interesting and I try not to be all doom and gloom about it and try to offer some sort of solutions here with it when and wherever that I can, but such is life. So tonight, I didn't really prep any notes or anything for this time around. It has been a chaotic week last week for me. Been a pretty busy and chaotic weekend. I actually had to work today, even though it's kind of a weird holiday week, isn't it? Let's see, what's up Brittany, what's up Kelly? But yeah, it's weird having 4th of July on a Tuesday. And so if you're like me having to work today and then off tomorrow, it's just a weird, weird out of the norm routine thing. So I almost wasn't going to do the live tonight, but one of my friends messaged me, Kingdom Lum. He does these live casts as well. He usually posts here and what, whatever medium you're viewing this on, you're going to usually be able to see his podcasts and they're good. They're live as well. Similar to mine. Uh, you know, him and I, we did these uh, way back when, and he kind of started back up, and I said, hey, I really need to get back up on here and talking to people and, you know, kind of seeing, gauging where you are, where you people are. And that's one thing I love about this versus, yeah, I was doing audio format only uh, podcasts, and while I like to do those just to kind of report on things or talk about my feelings on things, I love this because you're here, and I'm able to converse with you you're able to say what you say, and I'll I typically read them out as long as they're not, you know, they're within the community guidelines of Facebook. I will read them out and uh, kind of answer it and everything. And I I like that interaction with you. It it's nice to actually get to talk to people that uh, you know, that are like minded or kind of view things differently or whatnot. It's it's cool to see. It's cool to read. It's cool to hear other people out or and whatnot. What's up, Melissa? She says, happy 4th to everyone. Yep, and that's a good thing, too. We need to think about what today is. You need to really think about it. It's not just America's birthday. It's a day we, the, the left hates this day. And you really, really need to pay attention to why the left hates this day. Well, we're celebrating armed insurrection against the government. That's what we're celebrating. Yeah, we gained our independence through armed insurrection. So happy armed insurrectionist day. That's what we need to start saying to each other just to tick the liberals off, just to, you know, it kills them, just like Columbus Day kills them. You know, they can't stand it. it it's like, I'm going to pull it up here because I was talking about it the other week that Google didn't do anything for Memorial Day. And there I was, I was just on Google. 
Nothing. I wish I could show it to you. Literally nothing here. Google's not having any kind of cool, cute little page. Google. I want to make sure because I have a landing page just because of business reasons and my occupation. I have to use Google. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Nothing for the 4th of July on Google. But we had Juneteenth. They had... What's up, David? He's new to the vehicle. Welcome, Grace. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you all for joining me. Looks like we're going to have a full boat tonight. I know a few people can't join. They're having internet issues and whatnot. But that's fine. Hopefully, you can go back and watch this. If I'm not really covered much anything. We're just uh, talking about Google and how the left hate the 4th of July, which is not just America's, you know, a celebration of America's independence. It's a celebration of America's insurrectionalism, Armed Insurrectionist Day. And for Memorial Day, Google did nothing. You know, they usually do little animated things and little uh, art or whatever on the Google logo. Well, here it is, 4th of July Eve, and you can probably check it tomorrow. Nothing. Just like Memorial Day, but we had, golly, after Memorial Day, you know, you had the pride thing, and it seems like every day was something pride related on there. And then, they, of course, they had to have Juneteenth on there and nothing. Nothing for patriotic American holidays because they hate our country so much. They hate us. They don't want us to be great again. They don't want the middle class to succeed. No, they don't want poor people to get out of the rut that they're in and make it to the middle class or anything like that. They want to erode the middle class. I was actually having a conversation about that with a coworker today, and I was very surprised on his outlook uh, because I kind of thought he fell a little more on that other spectrum, but no. No, he actually, he actually seen things similar to how I do, and I'm like, they want the middle class gone, and don't make any mistake, Republicans want it gone too, because the middle class, like we've discussed before, and that's what all these mechanisms of controls for the three previous episodes that we did, you know, where we were talking about how climate change is going to affect your life, how you're not going to be able to eat, you're not going to be able to do anything, how uh, the electric vehicles and things like that are affecting your life, how the digital currency is going to affect your life. We talked about all that. And all of those are mechanisms to destroy the middle class. They're already trying to erode us. They're already trying to push us away. It's already in motion. The, the middle class keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, I bet it's hard for people making 50000 a year right now. I don't... For families that are just bringing in 50k a year, and I'm talking before taxes, I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how they're not doing some kind of side gig or something like that to help make ends meet. I don't know how they're owning a home and doing it. And that's what they want. That's what they're doing with these interest rates and allowing the inflation to go through the roof so your dollar doesn't buy as much. And the reason that they hate the middle class so much the reason they hate it so much is because, and most of you watching this are part of the middle class. Most conservatives typically are middle class. It's because we're the most independent class of them all. The poor depend on the government, that government cheddar, and the rich depend on the government to do their bidding. They use the government to go against their enemies. And I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about millionaires and things like that. That's chump change to the real players in the game. No, the real rich, you know, they are, uh, they are beyond seven figures. They are well beyond six figures, and they are pretty well beyond seven figures. That's the ones I'm talking about. They are the ones who are pulling the strings, and they don't, they don't like it because the middle class has this pivot that we can work for somebody, we can start our own thing, we can work and then have other things going on. And so we're not as beholden to the government and we, we probably pay the biggest portion of the taxes. And I'm going to include middle class, uh, I want to say from 
the government classifies it around that 50k a year mark all the way up to uh the the irs does it till around 400k but i would say middle class even up to millions a year because that if you get that spectrum of people they pretty much pay all of the taxes because most of your net worth billionaires and all that and high hundred hundred millionaires their net worth is on assets that they attain and they don't they don't keep the worth the income coming into them you get what i'm saying they don't have that coming to them it's a net worth but they they're not liquidly like, <laughs> they're not going through that money in a liquid manner they're, they got it off to where it can't be touched, where the taxes are not paid on it. They're paying pennies on the dollar when it comes to taxes versus what you and I are paying. So I don't necessarily say go after the rich. The, the thing about it is the Democrats, they want to go after the ones who can make a real difference. They're not going to go after the hand that feeds them, the ones that bribe them. They're not going to go after them. And so... Yeah, all of these, you need to understand, these are all mechanisms that I'm talking about that are going to affect your life and your children's life. You know, if, you, if you're on the elderly end of the spectrum, and there's, I am surprised at the demographics that watch, that view this. I mean, it's, we're all across the board here. From early 20s up until 80-year-olds. I mean, it, I'm surprised and thank you. I mean, that's, it's crazy. It's crazy to be able to reach that kind of people. And you, you got to understand what's going on because if you know and you're able to talk about it, you know, don't don't you know, use the sky as falling manner, but have that discussion with people. Have that discussion with your family and say, hey, like, you know, this is coming, right? Like everybody has to see it. Every, people choose to not believe and they choose to ignore it, but they still see it. They still see it. Mr. David, welcome. New to the video. Welcome. There is a way on here if you're tech savvy. Facebook has made it difficult, but you can get alerts to whenever I go live. I try to do it every Monday. Sometimes it's not always able to happen because life happens, but every Monday around this time between 8, 8.30 and I try to get on here and I aim for 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes we go a little over. Sometimes we're a little under an hour. Hadn't hit that 45 minutes yet. <laughs> It's hard to do, especially when people get on here commenting. James, Pride Month got tons. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy now, though. As soon as it switches over, it's like, it's like I don't know if you've seen Toy Story. That might have been, it might be uh, beyond your time of television, if you even watch television. Maybe you do, but uh, there was a part in Toy Story where Andy, which is the, you know, the, the movies about the toys and they come to life and talk to each other and all that, but, and they act like toys whenever the adults are around. Well, Andy's the little boy that plays with them as their, you know, their little boy and everything. And he's just like, I don't want to play with you anymore. And pretty much dumps uh, Woody, one of the main toy characters in the garbage, you know, and that's basically like what all these corporations did to the, the alphabet soup people and all that it's like there, i've seen a meme going around where it's like dropping the rainbow and all that like into the garbage i don't want to play with you anymore i mean that's exactly what it is and it's like come on if if you're into that if you're into that is that not the biggest insult ever for these companies to celebrate you and then all of a sudden you know uh 12 a.m july 1st bye bye <laughs> back to business as usual what happened? You know, it's like Groundhog Day, but you don't even remember the day before and you're just reliving the same day over and over. God, I mean, it's crazy. Dan says, love my country, despise my government. Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know. I seen this thing. I don't really watch Fox News, but I'll, I'll get some audio updates every now and then. I mainly use other modes like Twitter and Telegram. There's, there's some great news places on telegram and uh and especially on twitter to get information and you're getting it earlier and then you can also go to nurac.org which is my website that is basically a news aggregator there's some easter eggs on there but you can get to feeds in real time and pull from the sources that i pull from i just dropped a link to the website in the comments on there and so 
I did this because whenever I back whenever I got reach on Facebook, and I don't really care because it doesn't social media can keep you so busy. It's like you can be so busy on there and get nothing done and all that. Like if, you know, when you're out off of work and everything and you're trying, you know, maybe do a side job or get some work done, it's like you'll spend all this time on social media and you come out of it and like, man, I didn't get anything done on here, like nothing accomplished. And so having that reach can be tough sometimes on there. And so I would get so many people asking me where I got my news from. And, you know, I'd send this person links and this person. And way back when I thought to myself, hey, I need to just build a website that compiles the links of what I look at and what I get into it. And so I created, it's not your average citizen, but that's a very, that's a mouthful of a name. So I used like the military does and just acronymed it out. And it's NURAC.org. And so I even have it pulled up here. Go up to the main page and uh you know it's got the podcast on there you can go back and listen to the uh the different things i've talked about the past few episodes it's got links to get you to the full i think i'm up to like 22 episodes now so this one will be the 23rd which is pretty awesome uh they, these are by no means easy to do a lot of times i put notes together unless i'm free freestyling it like i am tonight which Hey, it's fun to do. It's fun to get on here and talk to y'all. And so James says they sell in the idea of tiny houses, limit land and space to the port. Yeah. And that's like I was talking about in the very last episode, which I'm about to upload to the podcast, uh, you know, the, the previous podcast. And that's the 15 minute cities, the smart cities that are coming. You know, we, we went over in it, like the land and how they're going to, how Biden his initiative by, I think, 2030 is what I said on there, what I read out. And by 2030, he wants like 50% of the land not inhabited by humans. I mean, that's crazy. They're going to make the land just unbearable for landowners to have. That's what they want to do. But real quick, back to NURAC.org. Uh, I won't harp on it too long, but you really should check it out. There's a ton of stuff you can go on there. You can click the news uh, tab at the top. The blog, if you click on the blog there and you can click by phone, you'll see these news reports. And I do daily news reports that I'll pull from sometimes early that morning if I have time on a lunch break to add them to it. It's on an automatic posting thing. It's a pretty cool app that I use uh, that, that works in con conjunction with the website. But it's on there and I aggregate all these stories and everything that I find and I try to make it simple as possible and you can dive into it and whatnot whenever you know and uh, check out the news so if you see a headline that that catches your eye and you want to know more you can click on that link and it'll take you to the original news source and then anything in pink that's on the site you'll know is my comments that I'm adding to it that my thoughts to it some days I have time to add thoughts to it and I, and I got a little bit longer lunch break and some days I'm just covered up and it's all I can do that night before to pull all, everything I heard that day and then maybe some quick things that happened that morning on the lunch break and then I'm off. But you definitely want to check it out. I use them. It helps me keep up with news and things going on and you can start detecting patterns of things going on. And it really does make things easier. So that's NURAC.org. If anything ever happens to me on Facebook, on the medium you're viewing me on, and you want to you want to know what happened or whatever, if you can't find me, I will be able to post there the same things that I post on social media. And you'll be able to comment on there. You can actually do comments on all the posts that I do. And uh, it's in more of a uh, private manner too, so you don't have to, put your info out there, but you can still ask questions and whatnot or add to it if you want to, or add some links. And so that's something I made that it's, if the worst happened, cause I was banned from this platform for like five or six weeks after January 6th is really weird, but some groups that I was admin of and <clears throat> several of us were pulled, no rhyme or reason, no warning. All of a sudden it said, you've been logged out of your Facebook, tried to log in, 
my wife looked. She's like, your account does not even exist anymore. And it was gone. And then six weeks later, they re-uploaded it. And it happened to a lot of us. And I really contemplated whether I wanted to even get back on Facebook after this because it's silly. It's not like I'm out here trying to set up, you know, anti-government groups or anything like that. No, I'm trying to communicate information to you. But they don't like that. They don't want us communicating information. So I took it upon myself to build something. It took me over a year to build something outside of social media that I can't, I don't have to control what I say. I can say whatever I want to say and post whatever I want to post and not have to go against community standards because I am the community standards over on neurac.org. <clears throat> so yeah. David says, we need to all, we all need to band together. We pay them. Don't know what we could do. Yeah. We definitely need to do something because they really don't care about us, do they? And David said, I will try to watch for you to come on. I appreciate that, David. Kelly, I switched to Newsmax. Newsmax is good, but what happened to Fox is just going to keep happening. Just like they fired the guy who was there for like 20 years, 10 or 20 years, and he was Tucker's, one of Tucker Carlson's producers. He put on the on the little uh, ticker at the bottom, you know, under the Biden thing, said, want to be Democrat or want to be dictator. And uh, I think it ran, it wasn't more than 90 seconds. I think it, I think it was 26 seconds, but everybody seen it and they let him go over it. And apparently the new uh, CEO of Fox or whatever she is, she is very woke. And I mean, Fox is turning. It's coming. Like it's, it's blatantly obvious now, especially with them letting Tucker go, that it is controlled opposition. That is all it is. That's what the Murdoch offspring want it to be. That it's just there to rile up the people on the right. And it happens to get all these views, but they are alienating their viewership. They're alienating them so bad and it's not worth it. But now I will hot link to some of the editorial posts because some of the editors, there are still doing the right thing. And that's, you know, you definitely need to pay attention to them because they're doing the real work. They're typing this all out. They're doing the research They're You know, generally a lot of times they're the ones typing up the monologues and all that for all the talking heads there on Fox, you know, Ingram and waters and all them. These editors are the ones that are doing it. They're putting in the work and they, they truly believe. And especially the other, the lower down people that are doing the writing. So, you know, they, they are more than likely like us, but Fox does not have our interests at hand. And I rarely watch them anymore. The first time I've turned them on since Tucker being let go, the first time was with the, uh, the Wagner coupe, you know, that, now, as we're getting beyond it, I'm thinking it's more of a, more of just a psyop or some kind of move. Hello, Hank. How you doing, buddy? Hank, I guess Hank wanted to come in here and see everybody. <laughs> he likes to just barge in. Come here. <laughs> just shut the door and leave him in here. But yeah, anyways, that was Hank. He wanted to come tell everybody hello. But yes, Fox News is definitely, definitely controlled opposition. And then we had uh, this drop today. We had, I uh, appreciate that, Kelly. Suzanne says she's listening. We had uh, Hunter Biden filmed himself smoking crack behind the wheel, driving at 172 mile per hour highway on or on the way to Vegas. So yeah, I wonder what he'll get for that. I wonder if it'll be the same thing, you know, that he just gets slap on the wrist for some serious tax evasion and felonies. You know, we'll probably have another uh Titan sub dive into the Titanic again and have everybody sidetracked while they uh they work out their little deals with the Justice Department. Because we have a Justice Department that will not go after them. That's I get that the Republicans are trying to beat the war drum and get donations rolling back in with the Biden impeachment, but where are you going get, to get to on it? When he controls the Justice Department, 
They're not going to remove him from office. And if they do remove him, what are we stuck with? We're stuck with Kamala. What's up, Kingdom Lum? If we remove and impeach Biden, and I'm not saying don't do it, but golly, they're so hyper-focused on it. And I'm like, where's the real business? Like, why are we still not moving? Like, we did a little bit on the ATF pistol brace ruling that's going to put tens of millions of gun owners down as felons, which is what the left wants. You're going to make these people felons, you know, liable for like 10 years in jail. You know, where, where's the rush on that? That's your constituents, Republicans. Where are you at? Where are you? I mean, there's just no hope for these people. And, I, like, that's one thing I talked with uh, Kingdom Lum. Like, I told him, I said, I will not back another candidate ever again. Ever again. Because I'm so disappointed with the last one that I backed. That I hardcore backed. There's a few that in the past I've spoken, but the last one I hardcore backed. I'm so disappointed because so much has been walked back. <clears throat> they, they've, I feel like they've pretty much done a freaking 180 on what they were. And uh, I just, I will never back a politician again. They are not the answer to our problems. Not, and I'll go ahead and say this. I will go as far as to say this. I will always vote. I'll never tell people not to vote. You should vote. Even if you think it doesn't count, you still should go vote. You should encourage those around you to go vote. Because it, what is it going to hurt for you to go out there and vote? It's not going to hurt you one bit, but you're exercising a right. But stop sending these freaking Republicans money. Stop sending them money. And only if it's one that's hardcore wants what you want. That they get up there and they're trying to do the things that you want them to do. Send them money. Do not send the, these people money just because they're impeaching Biden. Because it's a fart in the wind, folks. <laughs> it's all it is. It's something to get you riled up. So they can get campaign donations between now and then because they don't have Trump backing them like he did to get the money wheel pulling in. But you know who's getting the money? Trump is. And I, that's fine. If you feel like Trump needs the campaign funds, that's fine. That's fine. I, we need somebody like him to come back in and shake things up again. But it's clear and evidence that Republicans are trying to move on from Trump, even though the demographics and the conservative polls place him at like 80%, near 80%. They want him. And yeah, they're, they're not even, they're ignoring it. And then I'm sure when the primary comes around, they'll pick him. The primary will roll around. It'll be Trump. And then they'll rally around him. And then they'll be begging him to say, pick me, to endorse me, and blah, 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 Trump, Trump, Trump. And then we'll probably hear our own congressperson here in the 14th be all about Trump again, <clears throat> all of a sudden. Stop sending these people money. <laughs> I, I never, never in a million years, I definitely three years ago, never thought I would be here in front of you saying this, but stop sending them money. That, that sends a message to them like, you're not helping me out. You're not doing the things you said you were going to do. That's helping me out. You want to impeach Biden? Cool. Do that shit on your own time. Stop wasting my constituent time for a position for me and my people that we put you up there for. We got real problems going on here. Not trying to impeach somebody that the justice system, system isn't going to touch. Start cutting the justice system's funding. You have the ability to do so. Why are you not doing this? The ATF wants to put, make 10 million gun owners felons for having a piece of plastic at the end of a freaking buffer tube that serves no purpose but to have stability for your cheek and your arm over something that stupid they want to make us felons? But you're over here trying to impeach somebody. Like, defund the ATF like you say you're going to do. Start doing that budget saying cut, cut, cut. Oh, if, if the justice system has time to do all these crazy investigations, then they're clearly overstaffed. Cut this position, that position, this position, that position. We don't need this anymore or that. No. 
Why is it Republicans won't do that? Why is it they won't cut out these uh, these excess jobs? They let these agencies be created. They let them the Democrats have their way and up the ante and up the personnel to do ridiculous things. Arming IRS agents, I can't think of one reason an IRS agent needs a firearm. Can't think of one reason why they need a government department issued firearm. Not one. Crazy. We live in crazy town. And that's what will get these Republicans' attention is if the money train stops rolling in and they're like, why are you guys not donating to us? It's because you're not doing your job. You're not doing the things you said you would do, so we're not going to give you any more money. Figure it out your own way or get out of the way so somebody who can do something can get in there. Sayonara. Hit some of the comments here. Grace. Storms around me. I will watch. I understand. Hey, it'll be up. I always pin it to my page. So however you're viewing this, if you click on my profile page, I will pin the preview this episode. As soon as it's over, it will be pinned there. So you can always go back and view it. And then within a few days, I'll up upload it onto nurac.org. And you can listen from there or all the major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all of them, it will be uploaded on there. Kingdom Loan, so much chaos going on simultaneously. It is. It is. Like, it's, I, I sat down, I had a good 15 minutes to put some notes together. And I usually like will clip it all on my phone and I just look at my phone today and I'm like, man, there's just so much. I, I couldn't cover it in an hour. And it's like, I don't want to favor this thing over that thing. And I thought, I'm just going to freestyle it and hit whatever comes up tonight just to give a little bit of a break because I've been hitting it hard on the things going on, like the climate change and the electric vehicles and the smart cities. And I thought, well, this will be a little departure and then we'll hit part of the finale of it maybe next week but yeah there is so much going on right now david i watch youtube to get highlights go to the next get sam ready sorry for the spelling cannot see what i'm texting i understand that completely so i'll watch the youtube and jump from don't worry they're not letting me correct everything sorry oh you're good man <clears throat> you are good no, I, I use YouTube a lot. I hate Google. I hate the platform, but YouTube is helpful because it is an outlet for people like us to get to talk to each other. And I'm looking at doing what Kingdom Lum is doing. And hopefully whenever I upgrade my hardware and stop talking to you from my Chromebook, I can uh, use the streaming. Uh, the, I think he's using Streamlabs or something like that. And I can simultaneously stream to YouTube. I've actually got a channel up and going. I'm not ready to give it out to people yet. I kind of did it for a contest and Working on some content, getting it up there. It's a little departure from what I'm doing here. It's more based on Second Amendment stuff and preparedness. And like right here around me, I have gear and things like that. And it's going over it. <clears throat> so if you're interested in that, be be watching for me to post my YouTube link. But I'm, I'm wanting to get a few things on there before I really release it to my friends and the public and everybody here. Dan says, what part of shall not be infringed do they not understand? They don't care. They think they are above it all. They, they do not care about our rights and the rights that the Constitution reinforce and pretty much tell them that it's hands off. <clears throat> they don't care. I mean, you have Gavin Newsom trying to rewrite the Second Amendment. I'm not making this up. If some, if an idiot like that has his way, and remember, they recalled him. Some funny business was pulled and he was able to stay in office, but they got enough people there that were ticked off at him and recalled him. And uh, Uncle Alex over at InfoWars seems to think that Gavin Newsom may be the Democrats' nominee, and that, that could be because he is he's, he's harder left than Biden. That guy is a raven lunatic. I mean, not Uncle Alex, but Gavin Newsom. <clears throat> he is a raving lunatic, and just some of the the outlandish crap that California comes up with, like he is able to take it to the next level. 
And it terrifies me for that guy to be running for president. And I think he's throwing his hand, like his hat into the ring on it. And yeah, that, and these hard lefters will rally around it. And I, I guarantee you Soros, his son, all of them will. They're going to rally around him. That guy is bad news. He really is. You know, like, you think Obama was bad? Uh, that guy is bad news. Kingdom Lum, abolish these un unconstitutional institutional corrupt agencies. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I forget who said it. Like, they can create these three-letter three -letter agencies, but they can't get rid of them. They, they'll create them, and they will never do away with them. And it's like, and I don't think FDR intended on them to be going forever. You know, most of the three letter agencies were created during the great depression to give people without jobs a job via the government. Yeah. A lot of socialism went on then. There's a lot of experimentation that has bled over into the problems we have today. I don't think, you know, it, it's hard to play Monday morning armchair quarterback but I don't think they meant for these agencies to continue on the way they have. I really don't. Really don't. Annette says, I have stopped sending money, yes, even to Trump. I am done when it comes to giving a politician. I have been generous for years, no more. Yeah, I'm not. Until I get some of my rights back and they stop giving them away vis-a-vis -vis red flag laws and things like that, it ain't gonna happen. Like. Every time, uh, and it's not just about gun rights. Don't get me wrong. Every time, but I, I will use them as an example. Every time a hardcore gun bill comes up, the Republicans counter it. And then they give and they allow a little bit to slip through. Does that sound like they're on our team? When This, this has been times that they could just easily have said no and gridlocked the thing. But they don't. They compromise. I mean, even on the ATF thing that they the vote that they did, there was there were some Republicans that voted against party lines. I, it's just crazy. It's crazy, and they don't need our money. They're taking enough with the taxes, and they're allowing that. They're allowing the, like, the Republicans are just as bad allowing this inflation to be as horrible as it is. David, how would we stop their paydays? Well, that's where we need the investigations. That's, if we turn these uh, politicians out that are not helping us out and we get new blood in, oh yeah, that's how it happens. We get the new blood in there. We end these, see the deep state there is all these non-political positions that are there working that these appointees that keep the corruption going. It's the staffers and people like that. That's the true deep state. <clears throat> A lot of them serve different positions and all that. And they moved up into leadership management positions that are not elected. We didn't elect these people in, but they think they know what's best for us. And so they pull the strings of these politicians and they manage their stuff and tell them which way to go. And they have teams that read all these bills and tell them to yes or no. And all of that, you can look into this, but that's the deep state. That's what the deep state is in Washington. And I think that's what happened to our Congresswoman because she is flipped. It's evident. I hate it. If, if you disagree, I understand completely, but I've seen enough to know enough. And I hate it, but that's the way it's going to be until we get new people in there and they start seeing the deep state for what it is and saying, all right, I want you out of Washington. You're done. You're fired. You're going home. Until we get that happening, it's not going to be anything. Because they make the connections to get the money to grease the palms of what they need to do. David says, Gavin Newsom is a grease posse. Yeah, he's a snake. He is the snake. Kingdom Lum, they weren't me. Yeah, I mean, it. it is. It is crazy. So let's hit on some of the news reports here. What we got going on, so. Seen some videos. Had several people asking me about the air quality this past week. 
and getting a chemical smell smell to the air and uh there's an interesting video going around of a guy talking about a pipeline bust in Chicago, I think it was. Where was that? Yeah. It's Chicago. And uh yeah, that that could be part of it. Top you know, VOCs releasing hazardous VOCs in the air. And we had uh Biden wants to plan Open a plan that will block sunlight from hitting the surface of the earth in the bid to limit global warming. Keep in mind, by 2030, he wants 50% of the land in the USA uninhabited by humans. Then we have these French riots. Uh, they ran a, car, a burning car into the mayor's house there the other night. Crazy stuff going on. I see a lot of people beating up white uh, French nationalists just for being white. Does that remind you of uh, a certain summer of love three years ago? Let's touch on today's news report. Yeah, just like I was talking about at the beginning, for those of you just joining, uh, 4th of July is a celebration of armed seditionists. That's a hard pill for liberals to swallow, and that's why we were talking about it. Google is not gonna celebrate fourth of july they don't have any you know clever cute little uh art up there with the google logo and i'll be surprised tomorrow if they have it let's see what else we got going on here apparently we're gonna have ketchup infused with pepsi that's disgusting you know we had the uh Supreme Court deliver wins on student loans and free speech, you know, and of course Biden is trying to walk that back, especially the student loans thing. They're going to try to hit it from a different angle. And then I even, I even hot link posted here. It's embedded on there. Tucker Carlson's episode eight from Twitter. I've not had a chance to watch it yet, but I try to post them every time you release it, it'll be on the following day's news report. So the Fed economists warn of looming disaster due to high interest rates. So, yeah, talking about the Federal Reserve just jacking up those interest rates, that's going to crash the economy. I mean, we all know it's coming. I'm, I'm sure we're all noticing the slowdowns that are going on now with our jobs. I'm sure we are noticing that. It's not just the summer vacation in months. Then get ready for your gas prices to go up. It's good talking with you, David. Hope you, hope you jump on here again soon. Send me a friend request. I can't do it right now live. Saudi <clears throat> extends oil production cut as Russia reduces exports. Russia to cut oil exports by 500,000 in August. So yeah, your fuel prices are going to go up. Bitcoin banks and bullion bid to start H2 banks and stuff. So more ugly soft survey data showing serious con contractions of manufacturing se sector. So that is, uh, we're seeing the manufacturing sector pull back. So things are definitely slowing down in the manufacturing area. I've noticed it as it pertains to my occupation. Ben touches on a good thing. Uh, well, not necessarily good, but he touches on a good point couple cases of malaria in Florida and Texas. It's like the first time in 20, 30 years that we've had malaria here, and it's usually spread by mosquitoes. And doesn't a certain billionaire we talked about the other week who's buying up all the farmland, doesn't he have mosquito farms? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's got some mosquito farms out there. Hmm. Yeah. Give me just a second. I had to text message. I got to reply to. Let's see. What else we got? But yeah. So I think Bill Gates is trying to come up with a malaria vaccines now and have mosquitoes spread the vaccine. 
Something crazy like that. Muscow says it fooled a bid to kill the head of Crimea. <clears throat> Taiwan conducts missile live firing tests as Chinese warship are on a port call in Nigeria. It's part of a growing naval cooperation between the two countries. And then you have the U UK warning China over a bounty for Hong Kong dissidents where they're going there and recovering their people when they're not supposed to be. Yes, Dan, I did mean Mr. Bill Gates. I sure did. And then here, here is the cherry for today. <laughs> this is the cherry. The Obamas complained about being black and oppressed. Wait for it. Wait for it. While they were on board their luxury yacht, in the Greek islands after affirmative action overturned by Supreme Court. <laughs> Mind you, it's the same Obama with ancestors that owned slaves. That same Obama complained about being black and oppressed while he's on his uh, probably near billion dollar super yacht. Crazy. Is that not crazy? I feel like Obama is so oppressed. He lived such an oppressed life. You should read his book. I did. His first one. <clears throat> yeah, and, it, and if you don't want to read it, Dinesh D'Souza has a pretty good documentary about it, about his father and who his father was and what Obama's mission was and what he's done behind the scenes. And this was all while it was going on. And you can... It's evident now. It's crazy how watching it at that time foreshadowed everything that's going on now. But people won't listen. They, they like to brag about what they're doing. They'll use movies and media and little articles, just like after the 2020 election. You know, Time Magazine talks about the shadow campaign to save the 2020 election, where all, all these tech companies conspired with each other to limit false news and censor and fact checked everything and you notice a lot of leftist things didn't get fact checked or censored did they <laughs> but they saved the election for who nobody knows they don't know who it was saved for but it was saved james says they forgot the lobsters and crab legs on his yacht probably yeah probably probably didn't have enough white people working for him that's probably the oppression there. We covered the Biden wanting, wanting to uh, block out the sun. And so I'll touch a little bit on Friday stuff. There was something on there I definitely wanted to talk about. Of course, we knew the Titanic sub implosion was detected by the Navy's hours after losing communications. But... It wasn't released, and I had some guy on the Nurek Facebook page argue with me, and he said, well, it's a top-secret thing. They couldn't just admit that it's open, but I was like, it's okay five days later to admit about it, though? We couldn't talk about it at the time that we were there, that we had electronic ears and the water is listening. Couldn't talk about it then, but we had to let this go on for five days, and then it's okay to talk about it and admit it. Yeah, got you. Got you. Makes so much sense. Now, it's not that all this was going down with Hunter Biden, and the IRS whistleblower was coming out. No, it, it couldn't have been any of that. Couldn't be that uh, a Fox News host called the cell phone listed in the IRS documents and Joe Biden picked up <laughs> when he found out as a Fox News reporter or editor, <laughs> he hung up as quick as he could. No, couldn't be that. Crazy, crazy town that we live in. Clown world, as Kingdom Lum likes to call it. And it is. Everybody's starting to call it that now that we live in a clown world. I just, I don't know anymore, folks. I mean, it's like, I feel like I'm living in like the Simpsons combined with idiocracy. And maybe a little bit of South Park on there because that's how ridiculous things are getting now. It really is. Trying to see what else I had here. 
course, all the uh, Skittles people, you know, the Taste of the Rainbows people are all up in arms over the uh, website designer who refuses to serve the same-sex couple. They're like, oh, you know, this and that. And then somebody's coming out saying, oh, this will this will rally voters, you know, come election time. And I'm like, you got to understand, like, they make up a very small percentage of the population that's not going to sway this way or that way. <laughs> and, I mean, come on. If it's... I'm sorry, but the First Amendment was here long before, you know, you having to show homosexuality and everything else and the acceptance of that down people's throat. Most people don't care if you're homosexual. They really don't care. As long as you're not affecting their life and forcing it down their children's throat, they don't care. But, hey, guess what? What do you get when you start forcing it down people's throat and their children's throat and you start indoctrinating their children to it? You get all this craziness going on. Suddenly, the parents at the PTA meeting are terrorists. They're put on a terrorist watch list by the FBI. Hmm. Because you're screwing with people's kids. Because they're blatantly disregarding our constitutional rights, our natural given rights. Because they're superseding it with this new hip thing and creating these problems where there are none. I could I could go on a tangent on that all night long. <laughs> Here's another one. They want to replace the word vagina with bonus hole to be inclusive to trans people. Crazy town we live in, folks. Crazy town. And then this one happened on the 29th of June. Uh, Joe Biden just walked off set on a live interview on MSNBC. I mean, you tell me how this guy's going to do it. Like, I don't know that he's going to get through this term, and you're telling me he's going to run for a 2024 election? I don't know how he'll make it. I mean, I, at times I wonder if they have somebody that's masked and is stand-in for him because it's very weird, and I... Like, I know you have to feel it, too. It feels like we don't even have a president. We don't even get presidential updates like we're used to. And I, maybe Trump spoiled us on it, but I feel like Obama did it a little bit more, too. And we just don't get those updates. And, I mean, it's like, where's Kamala? Where is she? What is she doing? Have you heard anything about her? Has she been to the border yet? Where is she? It's crazy. I, I mean, I feel like nobody's at the will. And whoever's controlling it is so many levels away, like they don't, they're, they're not in touch with the public. Ah, right here, about the malaria. Must be a coincidence, this is a tweet from Liz Churchill. Must be a coincidence that from 2003 to 2023, there wasn't even one case of malaria spread by mosquitoes and along comes a company funded by bill gates to solve a problem that didn't exist well that's politics folks and suddenly in the exact places where he releases a mosquito there's an outbreak of malaria suddenly hmm. almost like it was designed and then you got greta van whatever her name you know, uh, a little meme here about the pizza ovens in New York, and she's like, they're all mad. How dare you? You know, how dare you have a pizza in an oven that you've done for hundreds of years? How dare you? Is she going to go to Italy and tell them that? It's just a crazy time to be alive, folks. I have to get on here and vent to you all about it. <laughs> I don't have many people in my personal life that I can vent to about it that'll hear me out on it. And so I get on here and I'm, I'm thanking y'all for being here for this rant. This is a little bit more ranty than it normally is. I can't believe I got up here and ranted for almost an hour now. And this just dropped earlier today. AOC is calling for investigations into Supreme Court justices she doesn't agree with. So if you don't agree with me, we're going to investigate you. Uh, what is it the uh, Gestapo said? Was it, what was his name? You, you bring me the man and I will find you the crime. That's it. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. You bring me the man and I will find you the crime that we can accuse him of and put him in jail over. 
apparently there was a aerial photo of more than 50,000 Trump supporters in Pickens County, South Carolina, July 1st. Even the aerial shot couldn't get everyone in the picture. I'm telling you, Trump's got, I can't believe the support is still there because this, this should be, this should tell you that the media is lying and acting like everybody's moving on from Trump. The man was just indicted twice. And you have so many people there in Pickens County, South Carolina, that a drone cannot get them all in the photo. Crazy. There's about the Chicago pipeline outbreak. Severe weather causes unplanned flaring of gas odor at Whit Whitling, Indiana BP facility. So there's something weird going on with that. For sure. <laughs> there we go. George Washington. The USA will not interfere in any foreign conflict. The USA, 200 years later, interferes with every single foreign conflict. Yeah, pretty much. Slap in his face. Huh. Here we are. French police are fired upon with American rifles that may have come from Ukraine. You gotta love it. And there's an article that was buried. I can't find it anymore. And there is some truth to it. And then they try to backpedal it. But is where in South America, some USAT4s were seen and photographed by news photography. And they're like, oh, those are ones that they got from, I think it was in Venezuela. Those are ones that they got from, from 20, 25 years ago, back in 2004, 2004, 2005, whenever we did the last trade and arms deal with them. And it's like, and one of the guys who's uh, in military operations, special operations was like, uh, no, do you see these bands, these yellow bands around that AT4? That designates that it is this model that was built from this time frame to this time frame, which is 10 years after what they were trying to backpedal and say it was. It's like, no, <clears throat> that is a modern AT4 rocket launcher. And if you're not familiar what it is, it's a big, long green tube. You've probably seen them, but they're, they're long, probably four and a half feet long tubes and they fire one anti-tank rocket, and the one with those bands is a pretty nasty boy that, you know, you can you can shoot it at things other than tanks, pretty much any kind of ground vehicle, and some low-flying aircraft, too, if you know what you're doing, and it's a, it's a pretty nasty rocket that will mess some stuff up, <laughs> and we know that we gave these to Ukraine. That's really the only country that we've traded them with, and what are they doing in South America? What are they doing in a country that really does not like America right now? Where else could they be going? So now we have Flint, French police under fire from American rifles because we're sending this stuff to Ukraine and these people are getting it and they're selling it to people. <coughs> they're not using it to fight. They're like, oh, I, this is millions of dollars for me to sell. And that's what's going on. You're taxpayer, people. France to begin shutting down internet in certain neighborhoods to prevent use of social media to organize. So you need to understand that. Something goes down, you're not going to be able to use the internet to connect and contact with people. You can forget cell signal because we talked about that the last go around. When they fly a plane over that uses a, a 5G antenna in mass, all your information passes through it and then goes to the antenna. So you definitely, definitely want to find other means of communications. <clears throat> I don't have one in the room with me right now, but definitely want to get into some maybe ham radio things, learn how to get through it legally, learn other methods to communicate if things like that start going down, because they already did it in China, and then they were using the Apple airdrops, and then I, Apple cut that off for them whenever they were protesting in China. So. You best believe you need to learn about comms and the old way of doing communications if things were to go down. Because if, if big things were going down, and this goes this goes doubly if we're ever invaded, which is, I hate to say it, that, you know, I've been on this earth nearly 35 years now, and it's looking more and more like we could be invaded. 
attacked, first thing they'll take out is our communications. Just a crazy time to be alive. We've hit the one hour mark. Let's see what else we got on here. I think that was all that I have. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about that the other day uh, real quick. Ben says exactly 100%. Dan, Gates needs to be prosecuted. Yeah, he does. I mean, he's not even a doctor and he's doing all this medical stuff. God, I, we probably need to do an episode just completely on the horrors of Bill Gates. Sharon, insanity. Look who's supposedly the president. I know, I know, supposedly. We know that the shots are being called by somebody else. Probably Mr. Oppressed on his yacht in Greece. Ben, and this is what I was just talking about. NASA says we're supposed to get a solar flare of some sort that will knock the internet out for months. Just like I was saying, they're going to they're gonna lightly break what they're planning. They're going to lightly break it. And that I'm telling you, you're going to have some kind of internet disruption. You definitely, if you're at all serious about things, serious in a preparedness mindset, I'm not saying full underground bunker, you know, filled with everything. If you got that, that's cool and great. <clears throat> not to get hyper paranoid, not to waste all your money in it. There's cheap means of old school communication. And there's very nice books out there by a man named NC Scout. And he's got a book called Gorilla's Guide to the Bofang Radio. And you definitely need to pick one up. If you're a hammer, you'll you'll scoff at that. But some type of communication device. The bell fangs are so cheap that you can buy a couple and you can play around with them. Just don't transmit because that's illegal. As per the FCC, you have to have a ham operator's license to transmit. But you can receive and listen, and it is perfectly legal in an emergency to transmit out on. This is a good thing I want to close on. You definitely need to check that out. Like, I get it if you're into guns. I get it if you're not into guns. But communications is key. And it allows you to build a network with neighbors, people neighboring you that are in the same county, in the same zip code, in the same area, in the same PTA, whatever. <clears throat> These radios are cheap enough. They're usually between 20 and 24 bucks. And if you're in those short areas where you're maybe a mile to maybe five miles, depending on the elevation, you'll be able to communicate with each other. And there's, there's more advanced things like learning about repeaters and the repeaters in the area where you can use those and communicate even further. Ham radio operators get on and do what's called a net, and they talk all around the country using this old school method of technology. It's one that the government's actually been trying to shut down in recent years, but it works. It's hard to shut down. It's hard to jam. It's hard to block because there is almost, almost, I'm not going to say infinite, but almost an infinite amount of frequencies that you can transmit on and types of frequencies that they can never stop the communication. That's like your warlords and all that in South America use it. You just have to learn radio discipline. And that's one great thing about NC Scout's book. But if you're looking at it just, just as a calm standpoint, just as learning about communications, because, you know, in an event that goes down, what happens? I, I've been in certain events. I've had family members in events in area where something's going on, and these are useless because the lines are overload, overloaded and jammed. When you can hop on a ham radio and, and be in real-time contact, especially if it's a walkie-talkie style ham radio, which is what the Bofangs are. So you definitely need to look into that. There's tons and tons and tons of great videos on YouTube that are not long and that will get you there. You know, you can spend the 20 to 25 bucks on one and watch maybe an hour's worth of YouTube videos, multiple YouTube videos to get it programmed and learn the basics of it and then jumping on the internet and looking up frequencies and then boom, you're plugged in locally. You're plugged in locally. And that will help you big time because there's back channels and emergencies that you can contact on and say that something goes down, the power's out, cell phone towers are down, and you have no communications out, but you have a medical emergency. That back channels you right into 911 dish patch or even a uh, back channel of, to sheriff's vehicle. And you can communicate with them and call in an emergency. Could save somebody's life in a Unpolitical matter, related matter. 
These are things you definitely need to check into as far as prepping. All right, y'all, that's all I got. Be sure to check out NURAC.org. I post there almost daily. I do the weekly updates Monday through Friday. There will not be one tomorrow with the holiday because I'm going to spend time with my family. I really appreciate all of you jumping on here and joining me. I really appreciate the comments. If you're not my friend here on Facebook, please send me a friend request. I will accept it. If I don't accept it, shoot me a message. Say, hey, I seen your video. I want to be your friend. And definitely check out NURAC.org. Thank you, everyone. Y'all have a great 4th of July weekend. Spend time with your family. Shoot out some fireworks. Maybe get to the range and shoot your gun and practice uh, what our forefathers were, which was armed seditionists, and liberals hate to hear that. Thank y'all, and good night.